And welcome to Boxing During Dinner post Mayweather Logan Paul. The event took place last night. Victor Bermudez, David Berry here alongside me, Armando Alvarez. And last night, Victor, you were at, at the Hard Rock. My first question to you is, how did they not anticipate rain in Miami in June in an open-air stadium? I, I, it, it seemed like, remember the, the Marlins opening day at Marlins Park, the new stadium with a roof, and yet and they the rain was held with a rain delay? Um, I, I don't know what Showtime was thinking. I don't know what May, whether Promotions was thinking. First and foremost, horrible idea to have a fight outdoors in June in Miami, not because of the rain when the event started, but prior to that, it was so hot. And then on top of that, for the Canelo, Canelo was here on February 27th, and it seemed like their canopy, what, what was covering the ring, was a lot larger than the ring, not just so it would cover media row and, and some fans. Uh, there was a lot of seats that were empty due to the weather, the rain. Um, it, it was uncomfortable at times, so I don't think it was pretty well thought out as, as it should have been. I, I would think Canelo was much more thought out. <laughs> On and, February. Before, and before we get to talking about the fights, um, how was the atmosphere? Because this is the second fight at Hard Rock Stadium. I saw you made a comment on, on Twitter saying that that for the Canelo, there was a bigger crowd. than for Much Floyd. bigger crowd. Much bigger crowd. I, I, I was worried when I arrived. And, and look, it's, we, we've been over. The, I think we've spoken about this in, in past podcasts. It's just not knowing the market. Miami is different. You can't price yourself out. You can't ask these guys. This isn't Omaha, Nebraska. This isn't one of the diehard locations either. You need to price these tickets at a reasonable price. But then again, I understand what Floyd Mayweather does. He wants at every angle for there to be a celebrity. And that's what was around the ring. But there was a ton of empty seats. Nothing like what I, we saw just in February for, for Canelo. It was, that, that was an atmosphere as far as... Yep crowd fans that paid their money for it there was a lot of celebrities that you know got in there free because of showtime or what it may be but um it was nothing compared to what we saw in february for canelo ton of empty seats the atmosphere was what you would anticipate a mayweather fight to be on a ton of celebrities ton of invites but as far as paying crowd non-existent matt, matt, matt barnes is a celebrity but uh <laughs> <laughs> even, say- even my brother, my brother watches like I mean the NBA. He's not like extremely like like mm-hmm. diehard. Just I mean he he was, but now because of work and you know two kids and stuff, right? But he turns to me and he's like, "Who the who the hell is Matt Barnes?" I'm like, "You don't know who Matt Barnes is, but but yeah." But, uh, but no, look, look there, Anuel was there, Michael Irvin was there, uh, Brandon Marshall, Fred Taylor, Channing Crowder, th- those type of celebrities. So there was some celebrities, bunch of rappers. Uh, obviously, the Migos walked out. But yeah, there, there was also the Matt Barnes. And Matt Barnes was there because of Showtime. It's not because he was there for, for any other reason. So there was some big time stars there. But yeah, as far as the crowd, casual fan crowd and, and paying attendance, nothing like what we saw in February. So David, getting to the fight, because we, we have a lot to say about this fight. For, for us, it went as expected. I mean, yeah. I don't know what people were expecting. You know, oh, Floyd's going to win by knockout. Floyd... Floyd Floyd isn't a knockout guy. He hasn't been since he was pretty boy Floyd. Um, that's one. He was fighting a guy that was 190 pounds. That, that's two. Three, it was an exhibition. It was an exhibition, you know, and like Apollo's trainer, it's an exhibition. And he's like throw, trying to throw in the towel. Rocky got Apollo killed. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can live with that. Oh, jeez. But, <laughs> but, oh, but there, wasn't, there wasn't any throwing in the towel, but, but David... I mean, cor- correct me if I'm wrong. It went as expected, right? I, I actually, I, this is a scenario I absolutely saw for sure. In my my gut, what was going to happen is Logan Paul was going to tire out over the first few rounds, which happened, but to a much smaller extent to his credit. Um, and I thought Mayweather was going to sort of pick him apart with body shots and just take the wind out of him and there would be a, an attrition stoppage. I can't believe I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Credit to Logan Paul. Mayweather very, very obviously carried him in this fight. But but Logan Paul also got out of the way of a fair amount of shots and, and smothered Mayweather in a way that at least made him look like he 
he wasn't making a fool of himself. You know, he, he made a good account of himself. The, the show, despite the booing was uh, it was fun. It, it appeared competitive. Although you also had the sense Mayweather could have turned it on at any time, but he also didn't Mayweather had to choose what he was going to do. He didn't have free reign the way I think a lot of people expected he would have. Now, again, I'm not saying Logan Paul still had any chance of winning that fight last night. I'm saying that Mayweather had to work and and it was kind of fun for him in that regard. And, and to Mayweather's credit, he acknowledged as much, you know, at the end of the fight. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it delivered. Mayweather was never going to go in there to whitewash the guy. He wanted, you know, there to be entertainment value. Uh, call it like the discount version of the Conor McGregor fight, which is a discount version of an Andre Berto fight. Um, but it's just essentially, you know, what you can expect. And and I thought it was, I thought it was fine. I thought it's what we paid for. Man, but Floyd, Floyd at 44, uh, it's, it's incredible how he still has the speed, his timing. Um, I know he's fighting Logan Paul, but still pe- people, people like fail to, to understand the guy's 44 years old is still like a, a master at his game. I think last night he would have beaten Luis Arias and Jared Hurd. <laughs> and, and <laughs> either, either or. Um, and and Victor, it, it it's funny to me. And and, and I, while while David was laughing about the smothering, I was kind of smiling because um, a friend of mine and 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 you know you you have you have you have kids as well. Um, a, a friend of mine texts him and he goes, he goes, dude, like when he was smothering him, and and you know kind of like pushing him around. It's like he goes, it's what I do to my kids. You know, there was a big size difference. It was 30, 30 pounds or 30 pounds. So he was smothering Floyd. But th- that said, it was still pretty funny to see Floyd, a much smaller guy, walking down Logan Paul. It's what I expected to see. And I didn't see it quite enough. So I, I don't necessarily agree w- with David. I thought this was going to be three rounds tops because Logan Paul was going to get tired. He wasn't going to be able to stay you know, with, with Floyd Mayweather, I, I was disappointed. The fact that Floyd couldn't take him out. I understand why he couldn't take him out. He, he mentioned that, but he did also say, if I wanted to connect with some serious combinations, I could have, he never did. So the crowd was booing. I don't think they were booing Logan Paul. I think they were booing Floyd Mayweather. I think Floyd Mayweather deserved to get booed. He did show some flashes of the old Floyd Mayweather, elusive being able to get away from shots. But again, it's Logan Paul and people paid to see you, knockout Logan Paul. So the winner of the night, by far, Logan Paul. And I think he's going to get a n- numerous other shots because they they are the real winners. And like I told Jake Paul during the week, they are the real thieves. You want to talk about legalized bank robbery? Roy Mayweather is getting paid to do something he dedicated his entire life to do. These guys are just stealing money. The, bigger, the biggest winners of the entire week and moving forward, for sure, the Paul brothers. Dude, and and no, you're you're right. I mean, they, I, I think they all won all around because oh, you know, for sure. Uh, you Floyd, Floyd, Floyd made a ton of money to fight Logan Paul. I mean, that 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 in itself is crazy. They had advertisements during during the pay per view. Um, Lo- Logan just looked like a kid that was happy to be there at, at the end of the fight. But yeah, like I mean, and and David, there's no shame in saying it. I mean, credit to Logan Paul. The the guy showed some some technique. He threw jabs. He kind of did what he had to do against a smaller fighter. Of course, if he would have fought a bigger guy like Canelo, he would have gotten absolutely like destroyed, right. like flattened. You know, somebody that could actually punch. Um, and now Floyd Mayweather with with brittle hands at forty four. Um, I got a, a few texts after the fight saying, "Oh, what an embarrassment." I'm like, "Listen, it's an exhibition. It's a it's a YouTube guy. To me, a bigger embarrassment." was the fight before. Dervin Kalina is supposed to be a, a prospect, a contender at 15-0 and 0 and 13 knockouts from Venezuela. Comes in as a, as a last minute. Even as a prospect, this guy's in his early 30s. 33. So. <laughs> and my, and my, bro- my brother who was over at my house, who's um, turning 36 prospect. this year, he goes, I, ca- I can't believe I'm older than that dude. The guy <laughs> looked older than Badu Jack. So, and, and, <laughs> yes. and, he, and he might be. But the guy comes in and, and in Cuban speak, he's un papelazo. I mean, he comes in, uh, his punches were very slow. It was like Jabby J, like in Super Punch, Super Punch Out or Glass Joe, you know, that they telegraphed the punch. And he threw an uppercut at one point, arm up, uppercut, drops to one knee. I, I mean, it, it was embarrassing. Ah. It was embarrassing. First round, he, he, he claimed there was a low blow. 
No, Badu Jack hit him to the side a few times, and the guy like was wincing already. That to me, a pro doing that is far more embarrassing than whatever Logan Paul could have done last night. I agree, and and the fact that it was sold to us, you know, as a as a true professional fight, is is one of the arguments that I continue to use with people who are disappointed in it. And I'm like, but why? Like, okay, I get it. The Paul brothers don't make themselves necessarily likable, although in a weird way, I also think that's changing. Um, but you kind of like, yeah, you look at Dervin, whatever the hell, and you're thinking like, oh, well, at least the pro fighter should be stepping up, and he didn't, you know. And, and it's, it is embarrassing to think that people who identify themselves as such, you know, weirdo purists in the corner of the boxing universe were like, oh, I only, I'm the only one who understands my sport. Yeah, whatever, dork. Like, meanwhile, <laughs> you have an actual professional fighter who can't hold his own. Meanwhile, right. Logan Paul, who, sh- who showed up a couple of years ago, trained his ass off and didn't look like an idiot. Like, no, that's not the guy embarrassing the sport. The guy who's had a pad. And imagine how bad if he came into that fight 15 and 0 with 13 knockouts, how bad the guys are that he was fighting. In, in his native country. So don't talk to me about the fact that anyone's spoiling the sport of boxing. Bo- boxing has done plenty of that on its own without, <laughs> without any help from anybody else. Self-inflicted uh, wounds left and right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, we, we love the sport as much as anyone. I mean, I, I like bleed the sport like, like my Floyd Mayweather bloody DMT. <laughs> but I, I, I bleed the sport, man. And, but, but yeah, like boxing in itself does a lot more damage to itself with the bad decisions, the, um, the non-fighting, the, the mismatches than the Paul brothers could ever do to the sport. In fact, they're bringing eyes. They're bringing these kids like that have no zero interest in boxing. <clears throat> my, my wife's best friend, her son, who's going to be a senior in high school now, zero interest in boxing. Yet he was messaging me yesterday wanting to know what I thought about the fight. Yep. So, I mean, let's... Let's give credit where credit's due, right? Victor is, is, had Jake Paul send a message to his daughter. I'm sure his daughter could care less about boxing, but Jake Paul cares about Jake Paul. So that, that's, that's, a, that's a big win to me for, for, for boxing. But go, going back to, you know, Dervin Kalina and, and, and these, type of, uh, these type of fighters, I mean, David, you're absolutely right. Um, to, to me... To me, fighting a guy like Badu Jack, you got to be top notch. I know it's a last minute replacement. Our good friend Ahmed El Viali was, um, was, uh, you know, um, what's really it called? Yeah, he was, he was pushing for the fight. Ahmed's dangerous, like you said. I don't think that, um, that Badu Jack wanted to put himself in a dangerous situation. But yeah, like, you know, you have guys like Darren Rovell this morning, and, and David and I, uh, David responded to the tweet. I responded to David. But, but saying like, oh, you know, Floyd um, like diminished himself or tarnished his legacy or whatever. It, it's, it's so stupid. Like, Victor, we've seen the footage because we're not old enough. But Antonio Aoki, like, you know, throwing kicks on Muhammad Ali's legs. David mentioned also George Foreman one day, they brought like five cab drivers for George Foreman to like beat the living piss out of in one he round. In Canada. Yeah, he fought five guys in one night. So... So what's where's the outrage? Thunder lips threw Rocky over the over the ropes. <laughs> Dude, they 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 just I, either they know and they forget, and they're just trying to play to, to to the crowd and and those that were against what what occurred yesterday. Going back to your point about embarrassing for boxing, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, you think that's embarrassing for boxing? Embarrassing for boxing is the Badu Jack fight. The whole lead up, the fact that John Paul Scott tested positive for four different steroids, that's embarrassing for boxing because that was a legit match. That was a legit fight. So the fact that you have a fighter, a legit fighter, a former champion, testing positive for four different steroids just days before a fight, and then that turns into the spectacle that was the Badu Jack fight. That's what's wrong with boxing. That's what's the problem. That's what he should be upset about. That's what he, Dan Rovell should be tweeting about that's tarnishing the sport, not Floyd Mayweather. He probably doesn't even know who John Pascal is. He probably ne- never heard the name. But, you know, it's easy for people to, to chime in on, like, the big thing of the event um, and, and have an opinion in that regard. You know, but here's the other frustrating part, right? John Pascal is going to fight again. In Olympic sprinting, for example, you test positive for PEDs, you're out for four years. 
at, in certain scenarios. John Pascal can fight again within six months. There's not a you want convention. David. You want to talk about casual fans? I am no casual fan. At least I would like to think I'm not. I cover the sport for a living. I, I do this with you guys. I've been watching. I I I'm no casual fan. Right. I would rather see Logan Paul fight again than John Pascal. Amen. Think what you want about that. I agree. Yeah, it's, I think that's a good note to almost end on because <laughs> the piety of it. Yeah, boxing fans kind of love the fact that it's a niche sport, right? And then that they know that no one else can touch it. So in that niche, they kind of feel like, oh, well, this is our Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like the mainstream's never really going to care. <laughs> So, so they come up with this false piety to sort of protect it, and it's totally placed in the wrong place. I agree 100%. I would much rather see Jean Pascal, Big Baby Miller, never step foot in a boxing ring again. There's no place for it, especially in this sport. Talk about guys who are cheating the sport, like li- literally yeah. cheating the sport, and, and we're supposed to be okay with that? I- I'm not okay with that. But we, we got to start wrapping up. But Luis Arias and Jared Hurd, really quick, Ooh. to me it's sad to see Jared Hurd become – from, you know, uh, um, um, what's it called? A unified champion, right? He, he's basically going to be an opponent from now on. Yeah. For better or worse, and I became a big Jarrett Hurd fan. I, unlike Armando, was a big Aris Londi Lara fan. And I didn't think Jarrett Hurd that, had that in him in that fight that he beat Lara, um, especially with that final knockdown. Same. This is a guy that, in all sincerity, not for hyperbole, I would like to see retire. He's just experienced a major loss in his family. Granted, Jarrett Hurd has won almost every fight he's stepped in the ring for, but what is lost in that is what he gave away to win those fights. Jarrett Hurd has not been the same fighter since he fought Eris Lara Lara and, Lara, and yeah. Harrison. Remember the Trout fight, too. He, he took some big shots and from Austin, Austin Trout. Trout. For sure. The, this was a guy who was always going to have a short shelf life with that style, getting caught with the same overwrite hand 30 or 40 times in one fight at this level. Jermall Charlo, I'm sorry, sorry, Jermell Charlo, if it was the fight that he wanted, would have taken his head off oh, last yeah. night. Absolutely. Jared Hurd is a good dude, and, and I, I think it's time for him to, to consider something else. It's just not – for him, if he did want to get an opportunity at the top of the sport again, his health is in danger, I think. And, Victor, and really quick, but big win for Luis Arias. I mean – Absolutely, absolutely. The fact that Luis Arias is coming off of, you know, started his career 18-0, and then 0-2-1 and in his last three fights, the fact that he comes in and gives Jared Hurd everything he can handle, huge, huge victory. And, and I agree with David. There's something to be said about Jared and what he's going through because this fight was supposed to be at 154. He can't make that. And now we're, we're fighting at, at a heavier weight class. And Luis has no issues doing it and beats you while, while you know, taking this fight at a weight that he didn't, wasn't planning for. I think it's a great win for Luis Arias. He's trending in, in the right direction. And Jared, unfortunately, um, it's just, it's not panning out for you. And, and I think that's the end of the road. But it, it's just like what you said. He'll be a challenger the rest of the way. And who knows where, who will accept that challenge because he is still a risk. So yeah. he's probably going to be sitting on the, on the outside looking in. Yeah, yeah but I, I agree with David 100%. Yeah. I'd rather see him retire right now with the accomplishments he had in boxing while he's still young, while he still has those faculties about him instead of becoming a punching bag for yeah. guys moving up yeah. in weight or, or contenders moving up. But we got to wrap up. This has been boxing during dinner. And next week we have the Rio Miami fight, the Rio big fight, George Cambosos jr. Challenging uh, Teofimo Lopez for, for the world title at lightweight. And we're going to have coverage. So uh, stay tuned on boxing during dinner. Cause we'll have some great guests and some great interviews.